both of you doing today? We're doing great, oh. Charlotte. How are you? Nice I'm doing see. good. I got some special footage. I got my little fix to hold oh, me nice. until Monday. Okay. Good. Excellent. But one of the things that I really love is the moment when Wade is just like, I want my life to matter. And I want it to matter to the people that love me the yeah. most. And I want to know for the both of you being in this industry, I want to know what was that project that truly made you feel like what I'm doing as an actor matters? Oh, that's a good damn question. Oh, I got Just my therapy from this, y'all. Solid left hook right out of there, <laughs> right after the bell. Um, you, I'm, I'm going to say this character. It's mm -hmm. defined sort of my career. It's been the first movie I ever did in America. And it's been 25 years I've been playing it, and all around the world I've come to, I've, I've met people who've named their children Logan. I'm not saying it's because of me, but I think that character touches people, um, and this world that he inhabits touches people. That yes, there's wish fulfillment, it would be great to have claws and healing ability, but ultimately it's the human side of these characters that people relate to and touches them in different ways. And yeah, I, I've seen it really make an impact. I think, like, Clark Kent is the most interesting part of Superman, for real. Like, I think that's, yep. the, that's the thing that makes it interesting. And I, I, I do think that, like, I think people, everybody has have, like, an inexhaustible uh, uh, supply and yearning to impress the people they love and mean something to the people they love. Because I think we know deep down in our hearts that, like, everything else is kind of an illusion and is going to go away. Um, you know, what is the thing uh, Denzel said it on a show once he said you know you don't see it you don't see a, a the u-haul buried with uh, the the person all the everything they all their worldly possessions are you know right. going with them you know it's a so i think we all want to leave something behind that sort of matters to people and I, I mean that's an easy thing to write and it's a, certainly an easy thing to perform especially anyone who has family that means something to them mm -hmm. but i mean also too what i find interesting about both your characters is it feels like they're burdened with not being able to move forward from their past mistakes. Yeah. And they're not able to really move forward. It like haunts them. Yeah, they wear shame yeah. in, a, in different ways, but like they, well, they, they, they buck shame in, in, in very different ways, but they both, they're just more, they have more in common than not. Yeah. They're both, I deal, Deadpool deals with shame by, you know, deflection and humor and self effacing and blah, 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 and constant chatting, and he deals with just, un, with, with unblinking violence, you know, <laughs> and aggression, and it is, you know, they are two, there's no, I think they're both equally kind of toxic and horrendous at times, and um, it's interesting to watch these characters have to sort of drop that uh, facade and actually deal with stuff. But I like with the both of you and your careers, you move with the punches, the wins, the losses, and I really want to know, like, how have you learned to cope, unlike your characters, how have you learned to kind of cope and just continue to push forward? Mm continue to create things. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to have the courage to look at what you've done that maybe hasn't worked and to see where you could do better and to understand, I guess that's, but I can have a tendency to dwell too much and beat myself up and I've learned over the years to go, okay, um, okay, that may not have been my best, how can I do better? And to keep creating, to keep moving forward and not dwelling in the past because it can really erode your confidence. Yeah, I think like, I don't know, my every, horrendous fucking mistake I've made in my life has led to something great. Yeah. Even if it's just knowledge, even if it's just going like, oh, I feel really ashamed about that. Like I need to know m more about why I made that choice and why, how I can be, be you know, move forward and, 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 and make sure that not only do I not repeat that mistake, but someone else. To, like, I just think all of those things are so great. So like, yeah, nobody talks about the failures. Like that's the thing that like, that's the friggin' flower in the cake, man. Like that's how it, it's made. Um, yeah. You know, we only we're, we were kind of raised to, to be like patting ourselves on the back and you know, social media and Instagram culture where everything is perfect and wonderful. But like, fuck, man, the mistakes are the, where the good stuff happens. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. How you grow? Look, I just want to thank you both. I don't. It really meant a lot that you took time out of your day to speak with me. So I just want to you thank had, you um, so you have much. Amazing questions. You Look, did. I went to therapy with like, Wade. Okay, I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> he would make a horrible therapist. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I, you, no you, your I appreciate questions were you. amazing, and, and we've I'm, had a million interviews. Look, I've been trying to give y'all something new, okay? You That's, did well, <laughs> Thank you. You have no idea how much that means. And to. I'm sending so much love and light both your ways. Thank you so much. And next time I need you to teach me how to do the little claw thing so You're I can ready. get the... You look ready. Look, I, one of the things that I really love, because I'm just that weird person who goes to therapy for movies, um, there's goes a, to one. I like to just find therapy in movies. Yeah, so I like yeah. to get lost in whatever the character right. is being yeah. lost in. And I like that Wade is like kind of at this crossroads where he just wants to know that his life matters. 
that what he do, what he's doing matters and that it matters to the people that he loves the most. Yeah. And I want to know for the both of you being in this industry, what was that first project when you truly felt like what I'm doing right now really matters? Ooh. Uh, for me, it was a, I think it was a TV show I did about soldiers who were in Bosnia back in the 90s. Uh, and I was contacted by real soldiers who said that I watched that and that made a difference to it's always about Ooh. shelter it was about PTSD and sort of battle trauma and all the rest of it and so I sort of thought oh that it has an effect it's not just yeah we're not you know I'm not just having fun and doing a yeah and that was quite a that was quite a, a moment it was interesting but I think any any really good art whether it's you know, literature or film or TV or art, art you can you know, get visual art. from it. Yeah, it sort of tells you you're not alone, and it mm. tells you how to think, which you need to, how to live. You know, you need to be able to think to be able to live, and you know, and that's what it does. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. How about you? Um, I think mine was probably Orlando. I did this play mm. in the West End maybe two years ago now, end of 2022. It started and. Um, yeah, based on the Virginia Woolf book, and obviously it explores the theme of identity and queerness. And um, it was directed by Michael Grandage, and he does this amazing thing where he um, always uh, withholds, I think, ten percent or maybe more of the tickets, and then sells them t for ten pounds. So like anyone who couldn't normally come to the theatre can. And it meant that especially a load in the West End, of, especially yeah. in the West End, it's so expensive. But um, yeah, and then all these kids came, and all these young people, a lot of queer people, and yeah, I met an, a lot of amazing people who had incredible stories, and it was really moving to see how they related to the play. And I remember one experience was after the show, and I got told that there was this um, older man who was waiting to speak to me. Um, and yeah, he said that his uh, child was transitioning, and that he'd come, he'd heard about the play, and wanted to come to learn more about identity and what it meant to explore those areas of yourself. And he said it really helped, and that was like incredibly beautiful to hear. See, don't let, don't let nobody tell y'all that acting don't change lives, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You let them know. Yeah. Yeah. Saving you lives, them, okay? <laughs> right and Literally. That's a great question, yeah. But I mean, also, too, it's something about villains that I just love. Um, I remember watching some of my favorite actors, and they angered me so much that it made me feel conflicted, like, mm -hmm. about them as a person. I know that that's when you nail the part. And I want to know for you, you know, studying this craft, who was the first villain that you kind of, you know, looked after like, damn, like, y'all really did that. Like, almost your performance just kind of changed me. One of Ryan's references for me for this film was Christoph Waltz, his uh, performance in Inglourious Bastards. He plays his character called Hans Lander. Um, and, yeah, that, that performance, I just think, was, was such a good reference point for my character, Cassandra, as well, because he plays it so not evil he doesn't play into the villainy he sort of sits back sort of and supremely reasonable and yeah charming and, and charming yeah. and very charismatic and it's so creepy it's those are the scariest people okay? those are the scariest mm. ones who are unpredictable yeah how about you i don't know i'm struggling to think come back to me and i'll yeah okay mm. we'll come back yeah Devil Wears Prada, Miranda, Miranda Priestly in that film. I watched yeah, that recently yeah. and I was like, she that really is also ate. a great a like, villain. I know you're a villain, but I'm kind of here for it, okay? Yeah. Just a little bit, just a little bit. But I mean, what, I like this also, this whole thing with Chosen Family. I, I like that Wade is motivated by the people that he loves the most. And I want to know for you, like, being a part of this, like, who are kind of those champions for you? Like, who are the people in your life that kind of really help you coming back to set, working on each project? Sort of chosen family in life, you know? Yeah. I think my friends, yeah. I mean, I've lived with the same people for 10 years now. That's yeah. Nice. That same is a lot. Because yeah. I love my friends, and I was like, baby, I can't do it. Yeah, you can't. Well, sometimes you can't. There is very particular friends you can live with, because sometimes you just can't live together, and that's fine. But those people, they really keep me going. Like, keep me grounded, keep me going. Yeah. You know, they're just there, no matter how you're feeling. That's love right there. We gotta break that down more because I, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> With me, it's my, it? fam, my wife and my kids. And yeah, they're my beginning and end. I'm really fascinated about this 10 year thing. Look, I wish I had more time because I really wanna break that down. And I still want you to how tell me the villain. Like, how do you do that? 
But look, I just want to thank the both of you like for taking time out of your day to speak with me. It truly means a lot when you guys do this. And I'm just sending love and light both your ways. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm great. I am entranced by your nails. Look, I could I... be the next Wolverine, okay? Did I'm you notice saying. that Cassandra Nova, the villain in I this movie? I want to see how they told me that they, Cassandra, that she has like a special movement with the fingers in it. So yeah. I'm hoping. But now I'm realizing we completely missed an opportunity to make those fingers even more interesting. It's still going to slay. I know it is. Well, it's going to slay, but it's not going to slay like that. <laughs> I can I can be the the next the person next. okay for the next one. All right, for the sequel I am not necessarily committing to, but which okay. is always possible. But my schedule is clear, okay? Okay, good. And ready Your tech for event. You. All right. Great. Now, one of the things that really stuck with me, you know, watching the special footage is Wade just wants his life to matter. And I think that's something that we all want. And that was the point. You know, we all expect Deadpool to be funny and audacious and hopefully you'll agree it is. But we wanted to really tell a story and meet Wade at a point where he's a little lost and he's yearning for something more. He's yearning to matter. And the movie ultimately is about him thinking that mattering is one, that there's only one way, right? Which is to get famous and to join the bigs. But what he really realizes is sometimes the way to matter most is to be there for someone that you care about on an individual, person-by-person -person basis. And un it, unpredictably, that person is Wolverine. But I like that. It had me thinking about, like, what was that moment where I truly felt like what I was doing in life mattered? Yeah. And I want to know for you, what do you feel like that first project was for you that truly lets you know, like, what I'm doing truly matters? Oh, that's a great question. The first thing I will say is my the first answer that came to mind is really, I got four daughters. I know, I know that the esteem that I'm giving them in themselves mm. matters. That matters more than any movie I'll ever make. So that's my actual answer. My movie and professional answer is, I just finished traveling the world with Hugh and Ryan. We went to four continents in 15 days. And to meet people of every age who are like, night at the museum, cheaper by the dozen, real steel, free guy, to see that I was able to, in a world that is hard and heartbreaking sometimes, that I was able to give people an escape, laughter, the feels, that felt like it matters. And it feels like it matters. And it's this job that I love and seeing its impact really meant a lot to me. But I think also too is, is those moments, Logan and Wade are so alike to me because they're so burdened and defined by their past mistakes that they really can't move forward. They're stuck. And I want to know for you being in this industry, how have you learned to cope and not be defined by those past mistakes? That's how do you a, keep moving forward? Wow, really good question. You don't really know what you're made of till you have a bomb. Mm. I came out of the gate, I had like seven hits in a row when I was like the family comedy guy. And then I had a movie that I was sure was going to do great and it didn't. And when you can't rely on achievement, mm -hmm. when you don't get that victory lap, and you gotta just sit with yourself and be okay with yourself, that's when the good, important work starts. I love that. Can you be my life coach? I'm available. <laughs> Side hustle. But I, I have to talk about this opening because I feel like people are gonna talk about the music but to be honest, it's one of the best choreographed. Yes. Because, like, it's the little moments that matter. Those side moments that no one pays attention to. Can you please tell me about The, the action this? choreography or the dance choreography? <laughs> well, maybe both, but for time. I mean, really the action, because yeah. that's what did yeah. it for me. So, literally, I'm going to put this out on social media after the movie comes out. We had this idea of, wait, how cool would it be if it's a fight scene, but Wade uses the most unconventional weaponry imaginable? like blasphemous weaponry. And so that was the idea. And we said to our fight choreographer, his name is Alex Kiskovich, and I had met him on Adam Project. And Ryan and I said, Alex, take that idea, play around in your gym, give us some ideas. And a lot of it came from Alex. So that's why I want to, I want to name check him because when we saw this crappy iPhone video and we realized, oh wow, the violence can be its own form of dance. That unlocked a big idea for us, and we knew that we had a main title opening sequence that could be violent, yes, audacious, yes, but joyous. Look, it was perfect. I was like, oh, he ate with that. Like, 
<laughs> I need you're not gonna get you're gonna get credit, but you're not gonna get the true credit that all of you deserve for crafting that. So like thank you. Thank you. It's the little moments that like truly meant a lot to me in that like whole sequence. So like you I did really that. appreciate y'all did that. that. Thank okay. You. Thank you. But look, I just wanna thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with me. I really appreciate it and I appreciate everything that you've done to make our lives joyous. And I'm just sending nothing but love and light your way. I hope you I have really, a great day. I'm receiving it. I'm okay. It and I'm receiving it too, right okay? On. I was so happy when they announced that Sugar Bear was coming back for Deadpool Wolverine. Me too. And I wanted to know, like, what was your reaction? Like, did you even think that you would, like, make it to another part of the franchise? God, I hoped that I would. Um, you know, because Deadpool brought me back to life via time travel. Um, just me and his girlfriend, nobody else. So I figured, you know, Peter must be special to Deadpool. And so, yeah, to get the call to come back was just, I mean, I did cartwheels metaphorically because I can't do real ones. It's going to happen, okay? We're going to learn how to do flips and stuff. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen for us. But, I mean, everyone loved Peter. Peter was such a beloved character from Deadpool too. Mm -hmm. Like, what was it like to just receive that outpour of love from fans who just really enjoyed the character? I mean, incredibly special, especially because there was no... You know, Peter didn't appear in the comic books or anything, so we kind of made him up out of thin air. So to have people like that, you know, like there was no, he didn't get like a grace period or whatever. People weren't like, oh yeah, that guy, we like him already from the comic <laughs> books. They just had to like what we came up with. So to have that, you know, be successful was, made me very happy. But one of the themes that I really enjoy from the footage that we saw in the film is, is talking a lot about like, you know, way wants to matter in mm -hmm. the world. And I think a mm -hmm. lot of us want to matter and what we do matters yeah. to other people. And I want to know for you and your career, what was that project or what was that moment for you where you truly felt like, mm. you know, what I'm doing right now, that truly matters? Oh, that's a great question. The first thing I did that anybody paid me real attention to was a show called Catastrophe uh, that I co-wrote and co-starred in uh, with my friend Sharon Horgan. And that really connected with people. And that felt great because that was us talking about things that we really cared about, marriage, raising kids. And that that brought people happiness and made them, you know, curdle. And, uh, you know, it, that that was great. So that, that was the first project that really made me feel like this is this is happening. Wow. I love it. Look, I want a natural progression for Peter to evolve into, well, Peter's the superhero in my heart, okay? <laughs> but if you feel like you could give Peter a power, what do you feel like Peter's like superhero power would be? Oh, gosh. I mean, I don't know that he needs one more than he has, because there's one thing I really like about Peter is his humility. He's not like, I am a superhero. <laughs> He's like, I will support my friend Wade to the best of my abilities, and, you know, you realize after you live a few decades on this planet, you know, things like dedication, kindness, loyalty are invaluable. So that can be more powerful than having, like, laser fingers <laughs> or whatever. But, you know, what I do love about him is, like, he's the perfect hype man. Mm -hmm. I like that he supports Wade. He tries to yeah. get Wade to, like, get out of his funk. Yeah. And I want to know for you, like, who is that person for you? Who's, like, your hype man? Who's your Peter? Oh, it would probably be my mom. Um, maybe not. I mean, I've read a lot of people would say that. But my mom was always like, yeah, man, do your thing. Go nuts. And was always in my corner. So my mom would be my Peter. I love it. See, that's a good answer. You know what? I'm going to take that. I got to call my mom back. She already sent <laughs> yeah. me a text like, call your mother. Yes. So yes. Look, I just want to thank you so much for taking time to speak with me. Thank you for playing Peter as, like, the sweetest person uh -huh. in the world. And I just want to send nothing but love and light your way. I hope you have a great oh, day. Oh, well, right back at you. Thank Thanks you so much. much. I receive it. Thank uh -huh. you. Mm. Um, but one of the things that really stuck with me was Wade's character just wanting to feel like he matters mm -hmm. in this world and what he does matters to those mm -hmm. around him. And I want to know for you, looking back in your career, what was that first project that made you truly feel like <laughs> what I'm doing right now truly matters? Oh God, that's a tough one. You know, I think there were, there are so many great things about all the projects that I worked on, but a memory that really sticks out to me is working on a uh, skyscraper with Dwayne Johnson. And at some point during the press tour, we brought the movie to a hospital that specifically specialized with amputees. Mm -hmm. And we screened the film for them and they were 
so moved and so inspired and were so happy to have visibility into a, you know, a leading character who they related to. And I think that was something where I really felt like this is just beyond entertaining people. We've really like touched people to their core and, and brought some happiness to the world. So, yeah. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me get it together. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was here in New York, too. So. Oh, see? Full mm -hmm. circle. Mm -hmm. Now, for this film, I was really shocked with the footage. I was like, okay, like, we, we are going hard R with this. I'm here <laughs> for it. Okay, good. <laughs> but, you know, Deadpool is kind of a franchise that was kind of inherited that already had that mm -hmm. R rating. You know, if you can look at any of the other characters right now in the MCU, like, whose story would you want to take to a more mature audience? Ooh, that's a million dollar <laughs> question right there. The truth is, I don't think I would change any of the characters in the MCU right now. And I think, you know, before I even started working at Marvel, I just was such a fan of the movies. And it wasn't just the spectacle or the action or the humor. I just, they just created these incredible characters that I wanted to spend more time with. So I, I wouldn't change a thing with any of the pre-existing characters. If you had any new characters? Who, who would be on that list? I've been telling everyone, like, I would love to do something with Storm. I would love to see Storm back in the Marvel Universe. Okay, can we have that, please? Like, yeah. can we do, can I come on? Like, yes. let's just get this done, because we've been wanting let's this for a while. Let's do it, yes. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to hold you to this, okay? Okay, I have no power, but yes, let's do it's it. It's okay, we're going to make the power, all right? Okay, let's do it, <laughs> manifest. <laughs> see, okay. <laughs> Now, I always love having like the hype people. And I feel like as a producer, like you're the glue that kind of helps everything along. Mm -hmm. And it made me think of the character, Peter, who's like Wade's hype person. Oh, that's so, so funny. <laughs> so I want to know for you, working with so many people, working on so many different projects as a producer, like who's kind of your hype person when you're working on these projects? <laughs> I think like my best friends and my family, for sure, really, really hype me up, but definitely keep me you know, feet on the ground for sure. But it's so funny you said that because like, I feel like a hype woman for the, for the team. You know, I came from team sports and I love like bringing people together and inspiring them and trying to get everyone to give their best and feel like we're all in it together. So that is definitely one aspect of the job that I love. I love it. Now, I know that we're in store for cameos, and it made me kind of think of someone who I hope that I get to see, mm -hmm. um, which will be Blade. And as we're talking about this movie that we hope is going to make it, like, would you ever be open to, like, seeing Wesley return to a Blade franchise? God, that would be awesome. I mean, that character and Wesley are so beloved, absolutely. Um, I will say cameos is a word that we don't, totally use in this movie. Everyone else loves to use it, but I just think, you know, any characters who may or may not appear in this film, they, it's purely always story driven, right? Or because they serve some emotional purpose or have a full arc, so. Yeah. We love everybody equally, okay? Yeah, Whether exactly. We, see them or we don't. Yes. Right? <laughs> Look, I just want to thank you so much. Thank you for just You're being welcome. a powerful woman in this industry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your day to speak with me. It really means a lot. Thank and I'm you. just sending love and light your way. I'll oh my God, I love day. it. Thank you so thank much. You.